For 30 years, NASA flew space shuttles. It was a remarkable flying machine. From its cargo bay, satellites and planetary probes were released and sent on their way. Go for Hubble release. So was the Hubble telescope. Shuttles delivered hardware on dozens of flights to build the International Space Station, ISS. But perhaps the greatest benefit from the shuttle program was that it afforded hundreds of astronauts, not just from the United States, but from many countries, the opportunity to fly. A dozen astronauts of Hispanic heritage flew on space shuttles, their routes in places like Peru, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Spain. It's quite a bit different when you're all unencumbered and floating. There's really nothing that I could uh, adequately say that would describe what this feels like. Michael Lopez Alegria, born in Madrid, Spain and raised in California, flew three times on space shuttles and again on a Russian Soyuz rocket for a seven month stay as commander on board the ISS. During his shuttle and station time, he walked in space 10 times. This is what it looks like on the edge of the universe as far as I can tell. It's quite a view. Alegria, pretty much everyone calls him L.A., now a vice president at the company Axiom Space, recently commanded the first NASA-sanctioned flight to the space station by private citizens. It's quite an experience. Um, I, I can't even begin to describe how fun it's been to be in Dragon for the last day and a half or so, watching um, these guys' faces light up. Alegria, along with three paying customers, $55 million each for the trip, spent more than a week and a half on the station after a flight in a SpaceX Dragon capsule. True story. You know, we had just reached uh, orbit and getting out of our suits, and I was, you know, busy at uh, doing commander stuff, and one by one I could hear him say, expletive deleted as soon as they looked out the window. At literally every single one of them. And I just smiled a little bit, and then when I got my turn to look at it, same expletive. It's just an amazing experience. During the mission, L.A. showed off a bit of his self-professed, limited musical talent. Hey, I'm a better astronaut than a musician, that's what I'm sure. He played the keyboard in a duet of sorts with Black Bach, a neoclassical piano prodigy who played from the ground. Black Bach wrapped up the event with a tribute to L.A. It's such a pleasure to know someone who does the job that you do, so I just want to play this for you. Uh, this is Rocket Man, dedicated to you, buddy. Flying the Axiom mission with private citizens is the last thing you'd have expected from Alegria. When he flew on the Soyuz rocket to the space station in 2006, one of his crewmates was Iranian-American Anusha Ansari, the first self-funded woman to go to the station. He admittedly wasn't keen on space explorers, as Ansari calls herself, but his time in orbit with her changed his views. It has been a complete 180 degree change of direction, and I went from refusing the Kool-Aid to pouring the Kool-Aid. L.A. attended the Naval Academy, earning a master's degree in aeronautical engineering before becoming a naval aviator and test pilot. Just last year, he was inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame at the Kennedy Space Center. While he wasn't always a rocket man, during his speech, Alegria said he always wanted to be one. Along the way, we moved to California, where I grew up as a happy middle-class kid, pretty unaware of our humble roots. And so while my parents were sort of living the American dream, I was having dreams of my own of becoming an astronaut. My next door neighbor, best friend, and I played rocket ship in the closet of my bedroom, which was mocked up to look like some sort of space vehicle. Not everyone's childhood dreams come true, but LA's certainly did. The Spaniard who came from humble roots has had a 40 year career in aviation and space, and he's now spent more than 270 days in orbit. Who knows, he may not be done yet. Do you remember how do they detect the O2? 
At a meeting on the campus of the University of Central Florida, a team of researchers and graduate students with the university-based Florida Space Institute go over preparations for a study that might just alter our thinking of just how our solar system formed. For being the PI for the web project. Yeah. Is that a well, as we say in English, a pinch me moment. It is. I'm pinching myself first. <laughs> Noemi Pania Alonso and her team were awarded 100 hours of time. That's considered a lot on James Webb, the largest, most sophisticated space telescope ever built. It's really competitive to get time. So you have to put a very convincing proposal that uh, t tells principally two things. That the science that you can do is amazing and that you can only do that with the James Webb Space Telescope. So, because that's the big benefit of this moment, of this moment where we have a new toy in space to play with. The opportunity to do this with Webb has been a long time in the making for you. It's not that I didn't see it coming because I was working for it for years. But when you really receive that email that tells you, uh, we are happy to tell you that you, your program was awarded, it's like, no way. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very good. And lift off. The Webb telescope, now in orbit one million miles from Earth, Webb will begin capturing light from galaxies scientists believe formed close to the beginning of time itself, right after the Big Bang. It will look at planets in distant galaxies, scouring them for signs of water, carbon dioxide, methane, ingredients that might make them habitable. Pinea Alonso's team will be looking for the same ingredients, just a bit closer to home, at the edge of our solar system in what's called the Kuiper Belt. Her team is focused on analyzing what are called trans-Neptunian objects, or TNOs. So what are they? <laughs> These are uh, ice rocks. I like to call them ice rocks, you know? Ice rocks? Ice rocks, yeah. They are uh, snowballs. These are small bodies in the solar system that are basically made of ice. And we think that is what they are made of, but we don't really know. And that's what I'm going to do with the James Web. Why should we care about them? So we care about that because uh, they tell us where do we come from. They tell us how the solar system was when it formed. And they tell us that because these objects are so far away that have not been really processed. So they contain the most primitive material in the solar system. They are called trans-Neptunian because they orbit the sun beyond the orbit of Neptune. It may surprise you, but Pluto, now classified as a dwarf planet, is considered a TNO. Thousands have been discovered, and Pinay Alonso believes there could be billions of these ice rocks that are just too small to see with ground-based telescopes. The Webb telescope is the only way. Is it fair to say that these objects are the leftover material from mm -hmm. the formation of the solar system? You said it. You know more than me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Like Michael Lopez Alegria, Pinea Alonso's career has been on an upward trajectory for decades. Looking at the wonders of the heavens was instilled in her early. At what point did you start thinking about wanting to get into this field? Yeah, I never thought uh, while I was a child on getting in this field in particular. I looked a lot uh, to the sky and my mom used to point to some stars and tell us there's not really a star that's a planet that's Jupiter or that's Mars. She knew a bit but she shared it with us. So I really enjoyed looking at the sky when I was a kid. Eventually all that stargazing led her to a career in astrophysics. There was no lack of support from her parents when the little girl from the small town of Oviedo in northern Spain decided she wanted to be a scientist. My dad was the, like the caring one, so he used to say, I love you anyway. <laughs> and my mom was like, okay, you want to do this? So you know, you have to study. She got her degree and as a graduate student, worked at the observatory in the Canary Islands. Three nights uh, I was covering and supporting the works of others. 
and on the next eight days, I was working on my PhD during the day. And that was when I started focusing in planetary science. She came to the Space Institute at the University of Central Florida in 2015, first as a guest lecturer. Before that, she worked at NASA's Ames Research Center in California. She's also the deputy principal scientist for the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, where she lived for nearly a year. The main telescope's partial collapse after cables snapped was devastating. The Arecibo Observatory supported the community that did astrophysics all around, from black holes, pulsars, gravitational waves, all of that could be done with the Arecibo in some way. The telescope was also instrumental in detecting and tracking near-Earth asteroids, an asset for planetary defense. It's lost. It's lost. It's totally lost, that capacity. The focus now, all the attention is on ice rocks and the 59 they've selected to study with the help of the Webb telescope. Work is demanding, time is precious. But even when she's decompressing, when Nomi has time to herself, she's looking up. Like traveling to Idaho in 2017 to witness the solar eclipse. I really enjoy myself. I mean, I love doing what I do. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes part of your personal life. Mm -hmm. So if you don't really enjoy it, you are never going to succeed at this. Clearly, both Pinay Alonso and Lopez Alegria are driven and deeply successful because of it. And they turned their dreams to reality in a, pardon the pun, out of this world way. <laughs> <laughs>